What's up, YouTube? Okay, so I came up with a great way to stabilize footage, uh, especially long clips that would take uh, After Effects who knows how long to render out. And also, this way doesn't get any warping in your image. Uh, with the warp stabilizer, when you go to uh, subspace warp, walls that are doing this kind of thing, and it's like, you know, you get, you get some kind of weird effects. So let's jump right on into this. I shot some drone footage the other day, so uh, I'm gonna import my footage. So take your footage, drag it onto a new composition, and then I'm, I'm gonna scrub through and figure out exactly which part of this footage that I want. When you're done with that, go ahead and, and size down your work area by using this blue tab right with this gray bar here. And I'm gonna pick my out points and again, size down your work area. There we go. And then right click on the gray bar and go trim comp to work area. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to uh, track motion. And then we're gonna go in and take this tracker. We're gonna size this up just a little bit. Now the outside box, basically this is gonna be, this is gonna tell the computer what area to search in um, for this tracking point. Now it's really important to get a really high contrasted area. So I've got this nice point of this roof, really dark against the very bright area of the roof behind it. So I'm gonna go from there, I'm gonna find my tracking point, and I'm gonna hit the play button right on the right side of the screen here to track the motion of that point. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna give it X and Y coordinates as it moves around the screen. You'll see it, it like takes this path and it's gonna basically take every frame and it's gonna tell uh, the program what, um, what spot that little, that little pixel is in the frame. Okay, so when that's finished, Go ahead and right click down in your, in your uh, box there and we're gonna go to a new null object. Now we're gonna take the edit target button over on the right side and we're gonna target that null object and hit apply. And that's going, going to apply all those X and Y coordinates that we made just a second ago to the null object. Now we're gonna take our footage and we're gonna do something kind of out of the box here. We're gonna go transform flip horizontal, and then we're also gonna go transform and flip vertical. Make sure that you're doing this to your footage, not to your null object. The null object doesn't have that, that capability. And what we're gonna do is we're going to parent, we're gonna use the parent option, the little swirly guy, and we're gonna parent our video footage to the null object. And you'll see already, as I leave my mouse in the same place, it's tracking that motion basically inverted. So if, if one, if the video motion goes this way, the null object is now going this way because we've, we've changed the X and Y, we turn them both around. So now we're going to pre-comp both of those pieces and we're gonna flip this new pre-comp horizontally and flip it vertically. Now you'll see here in just a second, see how we've got, it's, it's moving the picture on the screen um, in the opposite motion of where that point moves on the screen. So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna size it up. So when you go to your transform options, you'll see that everything is at negative 100 because we flipped it horizontally, we flipped it vertically, so now it's negative 100% and negative 100%. So we've got a double, we've got a flipped video and then we've got a flipped comp. So everything, it puts it right back where it's supposed to be. So you're gonna to have to drag that further down than negative 100 because that's going to actually scale it up. So you wanna, you wanna find the points where the uh, background is encroaching on your picture there in your frame and size it up beyond that point. And then as we scrub through here, and you'll see that that point stays exactly perfectly still in the frame. Doesn't move at all. There's no warping on the picture because we didn't add a warp stabilizer. Isn't that miraculous? If I wasn't doing a tutorial on this, if I was just going through this process, it would have taken me I don't know, uh, probably 30 seconds longer than it takes to analyze or to uh, track the motion in that footage. Tracking motion in your footage is far easier for After Effects to do than it is to, uh, to do the warp stabilizer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, go through it a few times, really get it in your brain because if, you if you can get this thing down, like it's just so, so fast and, uh, and it looks great when you're done. So, all right, uh, take care.